guys, so you're welcome back. Hope you guys are feeling good. My name is Rupa Mbeke Kran. So, 13 priests researched the Quran, and after doing this research, they accepted Islam, they converted to Islam. What led to that? Let's find it out. The call to the divine truth comes from the Lord of the worlds, and when his call comes, it is a noteworthy point in a person's life. In this concise but eye-opening video, I will enlighten you on a number of priests from other religions who have turned to Islam. 1. A former evangelist priest from Sierra Leone named Moses Mark Bangura converted to Islam following a dream he had in 1993 and has been working for the cause of Islam since then. He experienced many material and non-material hardships after his conversion. His property was seized. He and his family were shunned from the community, and he even received death threats. Bangura adds that the primary objective of all missionary activities in Africa is to wipe out Islam. Christian missionaries are able to easily influence impoverished people using their financial resources. As poverty has had such a devastating impact on the Muslim youth that it has the potential to misguide them. 2. A Catholic priest from the U.S., Craig Fenter, converted to Islam and changed his name to Ismail in the year 2006. He was raised in Los Angeles and attended a Catholic school, and at the request of his family, he became a pastor. He didn't find the completeness he wanted in life. As he says, he felt a spiritual void learning about Islam. He felt that the void was filled. 3. Leif's Jetney, 75, a Swede who worked as a priest in the Church of Sweden for 30 years. In 2020, decided to convert to Islam and then changed his name from Leif to Ahmed. As a priest, the goal is to call to Christianity. Priests live and earn from the faith. But according to Leif, they call to things that are not logical. He held masses he couldn't really believe and he could never explain the Trinity. He worked a lot against racism. During this period, he met a young Muslim refugee from Morocco named Abdullah, with whom he discussed a lot about religion. He realized that in Christianity, the religion was confined to the church, while in Islam, submission to the will of God in practice was possible, even outside the confines of a mosque. This struck him hard, and in time he started worshiping Allah, and converted to Islam. He did not tell anyone else for the fear of not being accepted. He even continued to work as a priest for some time after accepting Islam. However, he felt like a hypocrite and decided to sell everything he had in Sweden and move to Morocco. 4. Imam Abdurrahman Sykes, an American-born revert, was a lay speaker preparing for a life of Christian ministry. A self-realization and personal actualization trainer, he entertained all race groups in the same classroom. He left the church for a time of reflection and spent six years in South Africa working to end apartheid. In 1987, Sykes embraced Islam. Celebrating diversity, he strives to build bridges of peace, dialogue, and understanding whereby all men and women come together on common ground in pursuit of peace, freedom, and justice for all. A large part of his vision includes educating and empowering converts to Islam to attain a sustainable level of Iman, thus preventing detachment from Islam. 5. The Russian priest Vladimir Urgumov, now Saeed Muhammad, converted to Islam after spending 15 years as a priest in the Orthodox Church. A young girl in his neighborhood converted to Islam, and he was so intrigued to find out more about Islam. He realized many common factors between Christianity and Islam, but the most important thing that drew the attention of Reverend Vladimir when studying Islam and attracted him strongly was the ease of the concept of monotheism in Islam compared to the concept of the Holy Trinity in Christianity. So he left his service in the church completely, converted to Islam, and decided immediately after that to go to Hajj on foot. 6. Polosin Ali Vyacheslav Sergeyevich 
grew up in an atheist family, but from early childhood believed in a mysterious and omnipotent God who would not refuse the one who turned to him. During some difficult situation of his youth, when his own strength was not sufficient, he used to turn his heart to God for assistance, and the situation turned the better way. In order to find the truth, he signed up to study philosophy at the State University, but no amount of deep reading satisfied his feelings of emptiness. He joined the Russian Orthodox Church and found a little peace in the hymns. Still, the acts of spirituality he had to perform to satisfy superstitious churchgoers left him feeling unsatisfied. All doubts about embracing Islam left him when he finally encountered the expounding of the Qur'an and Islamic teachings about Jesus, peace be upon him. He reinforced his convictions, and both his wife and he decided to announce their conversion to Islam and publicly preach monotheism in 1999. 7. An American pastor turned Muslim preacher, Samuel Earl Shropshire, has revealed the inspiration behind his embracing Islam, the people of Saudi Arabia. Shropshire, who now lives in Saudi Arabia, said living among the kingdom's good people and witnessing their hospitality and good morals majorly contributed to his decision to become Muslim. The former Christian pastor traveled to Jeddah in 2011 to work as an editor for a new easy-to-read English version of the Qur'an. He was worried about being discriminated against in the kingdom due to his religion, explaining that media outlets portrayed Muslims in a negative light and Saudis specifically. However, he soon realized that what he had seen in the media was flawed due to stereotypes and misconceptions. The kindness, hospitality, and amity he experienced alongside his work on the Qur'an encouraged him to learn more about the religion and further convinced him to embrace Islam. He converted to Islam soon after and lives in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. 8. A prominent Christian priest, Hilarion Hiji, based in California, United States, was formerly a Russian Orthodox monk and converted to Islam and changed his name to Saeed Abdul Latif. In a blog post about his journey to Islam, Hilarion Hiji expressed his decision as a reversion to Islam and that it was like coming home. According to him, he felt a spark of Islam since 20 years ago, but he stated, that he truly accepted Islam when he announced it. He says he feels a sense of peace, joy, and relief upon entering Islam. And now he's on his journey to learn more about the religion and develop a deeper love for the Ummah, for the Prophet, and for the Deen. 9. Amina Asilmi, born Janus Huff, 1945, March 2010, was a broadcast journalist, national Muslim community activist, and director of the International Union of Muslim Women. Formerly a Southern Baptist preacher, she converted to Islam in 1977 in college while trying to convert some Muslims to Christianity. She was trying desperately to convince some Arabs in her college that they'll burn in hell if they wouldn't accept Jesus as their savior, but they politely declined her offers of salvation. In frustration, she requested the religious books for her to read through to find the loopholes but to her surprise, she got convinced by Islam and took the Shahada. 10. Anthony George Baker was an American Protestant clergyman and medical doctor who converted to Islam. He had connections with other converts to Islam in the U.S. and is known to have published an article showcasing the relationship between medieval Christians and Muslims in Jerusalem. He was known for his lectures on Islam too. 11. This was what happened to the former British Catholic priests Idris Tawfiq on reciting Islam's holy book, the Qur'an, to his students at a school in Britain. And this was one of the important steps in the journey of conversion to Islam. During a recent lecture he gave at the British Council in Cairo, Tawfiq made clear that he has no regrets about his past and what he holds in regard to what Christians do and his life at the Vatican for five years. He says he enjoyed being a priest helping the people for some years. However, deep inside he was not happy and he felt that there was something not right. A second important coincidence for Tawfiq was his decision to quit his work at the Vatican, a step followed by making a trip to Egypt. 
This was his first introduction to Muslims in Islam, and he noticed how Egyptians are such gentle, sweet people, but also very strong. Like all Britons, his knowledge about Muslims up to that time didn't exceed what was on the TV about suicide bombers and fighters, which gave the impression that Islam is a religion of troubles. However, getting into Cairo, he discovered how beautiful this religion is. Very simple people selling goods on the street would abandon their trade and direct their face to Allah and pray the moment they heard the call to prayer from the mosque. They have a strong faith in the presence and will of Allah. They pray, fast, help the needy, and dream of having a trip to Mecca with the hope of living in heaven and the hereafter. In his usual job of teaching religious studies in the UK, he noticed how calm and well-disciplined the Muslim teenagers were in comparison to others. He took the Shahada at the London Central Mosque and then moved to Egypt. He thinks that the best and fastest way of acquainting the world with the true image of Islam is to set a good example in real life. 12. Before he became a Muslim and changed his name to Abdul Ahad Dawood, Reverend David Benjamin Kaldani was a Roman Catholic priest of the Uniate Chaldean sect. He was born in 1867 in Urmia in Persia, educated from his early infancy in that town. My conversion to Islam cannot be attributed to any cause other than the gracious direction of the Almighty Allah. Without his divine guidance, all learning, search, and other efforts to find the truth may even lead one astray. The moment I believed in the absolute unity of God, his holy apostle Muhammad became the pattern of my conduct and behavior. Professor Kaldani, a former Catholic bishop, accepted Islam in 1904 and adopted a Muslim name, Abdul Ahad Dawood. The above quote is taken from his scholarly work, Muhammad in the Bible. And that brings us to the end of this lengthy video of people who have found the truth despite being callers to faith in other religions. Allah guides those whose hearts are open to guidance and willing to hear the truth. Mm, well, like I always say, everybody is entitled to their, you know, what they, they believe in. You can believe in this today and decide to say, okay, what you believe in is not working for you or because maybe your faith is shaking or you think you are not getting enough proof that you want. Then that's why most people take these decisions. Like they gave their reasons for converting. Some of them said because of the Trinity does not make sense. Some of them said because of um, uh, they, they met a Muslim lady, the way she spoke to them, the way she was practicing Islam, you know, moved her, encouraged her. You know, most of these priests always give a lot of reasons why they convert her. Somebody even said because of, you know, the way they pray, pray, and um, you, you, can, you don't have to go to mosques always before you can connect to God. Even in Christianity, you don't have to go to church always before you can connect to God. You can have a secret room. What I mean by secret room, you can have your personal room or not even a personal room. You can be sitting on your chair and you pray silently. Even though people are even in a crowded place, you can still try. Even though, you know, yeah, some people say that if a place is crowded, you cannot concentrate to God. But anywhere you have, you can pray. You can communicate with God. It doesn't have to be church alone before you can, you know, come there. Because that's what that priest was trying to say that he noticed that, you know, you are limited to only church. You go to church to pray, to worship God. But Muslims, anywhere they are, you pray, you know. Yeah. Well, this was really beautiful. Like, like I always say, if you know, you are uh, you have a reason for converting or you want to convert to a particular religion and you take that decision you know congratulations to the person you know what you need to do is to move closer to god like we all say we are serving more god right that's what all what we all believe in but but me i always think that why will uh most priests decide to lose faith or because 
maybe they ask them questions they cannot give or why you you if you are asked a question that you, you cannot even give or you are on that you, there's a debate that is too strong for you that doesn't mean your faith should be shaken your faith should not be shaken in your religion i will not say that um is a must you must follow this religion some people you know can decide to say okay uh they don't know what they are doing in social so religion when they are in social so religion they cannot concentrate on god they don't even understand the god they are serving but when they convert they now got to understand yes it happens a lot and kudos to them but well i'm just so you know perplexed by the reasons some of their reasons for converting I'm just so surprised, even though it's not a bad thing. Converting to a religion that makes you happy and make you serve God more, it's a good one. I really enjoyed this video. I don't know about you, but this was really interesting. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.